How big is the universe? And how much of it can we see? These are some of the most profound and fascinating questions that humans have ever asked. And the answers are not as simple as you might think. In fact, they are constantly changing as we learn more about the cosmos and its mysteries. In this video, we will explore the latest measurement of the radius of the observable universe, which is the part of the universe that can be seen from Earth. We will explain what the observable universe is, how it is measured, and what the new finding means for our understanding of the universe and its fate. So, if you are curious about the size and the shape of the universe, and how it affects what we can see and know, stay tuned and watch this video till the end. The observable universe is the part of the universe that can be seen from Earth. But what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that we can only see the light that has reached us from distant objects since the beginning of the universe. You see, light travels at a finite speed, which is about 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second. That means that it takes time for light to travel from one place to another. For example, it takes about eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach us, and about four years for the light from the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, to reach us. So, when we look at the sun, we see it as it was eight minutes ago. And when we look at Proxima Centauri, we see it as it was four years ago. We are always looking at the past when we look at the sky. Now, imagine that we could look at the farthest object that we can see in the universe. How far would it be? And how old would the light be? Well, the answer is that it would be about 46 billion light years away and the light would be about 13.8 billion years old. That's because the universe is about 13.8 billion years old, and that's the oldest light that we can see. This light is called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMB for short, and it is the remnant of the Big Bang, the event that created the universe. The CMB is like a snapshot of the early universe when it was very hot and dense, and it fills the entire sky in all directions. By measuring the properties of the CMB, such as its temperature and polarization, we can learn a lot about the history and the structure of the universe. So, the observable universe is defined by the distance that light has traveled since the Big Bang, which is about 46 billion light years in any direction. This distance is called the particle horizon, and it is the boundary of the observable universe. But there is a catch. The particle horizon is not fixed, but it changes over time as the universe expands and more light reaches us from distant regions. This means that the observable universe is growing, and we can see more of it as time goes by. But how fast is it growing, and how big is it right now? That's what we will find out in the next section. To measure the radius of the observable universe, we need to know two things the age of the universe, and the rate of the universe's expansion. The age of the universe is the time that has passed since the Big Bang, and it is estimated to be about 13.8 billion years, based on the measurements of the CMB and other cosmological observations. The rate of the universe's expansion is the speed at which the space between galaxies is stretching, and it is measured by a parameter called the Hubble constant, named after the astronomer Edwin Hubble, who discovered the expansion of the universe in 1929. The Hubble constant tells us how fast the universe is expanding per unit of distance. For example, if the Hubble constant is 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, it means that two galaxies that are one megaparsec apart, which is about 3.26 million light years, are moving away from each other at a speed of 70 kilometers per second. Now, you might think that measuring the Hubble constant is easy, since we can just observe how fast the galaxies are receding from us. But it is not that simple, because there are different methods to measure the Hubble constant, and they do not always agree with each other. Some methods use the CMB data, some use the supernovae, which are exploding stars, some use the gravitational lensing, which is the bending of light by massive objects, and some use other techniques. Each method has its own assumptions and uncertainties, and the results can vary by a few percent. This discrepancy is known as the Hubble tension, and it is one of the biggest puzzles in modern cosmology. So, 
Why does the Hubble constant matter for the measurement of the observable universe? Well, because the Hubble constant affects how fast the particle horizon grows over time. The higher the Hubble constant, the faster the universe expands, and the slower the particle horizon grows. The lower the Hubble constant, the slower the universe expands, and the faster the particle horizon grows. So, depending on the value of the Hubble constant, we can get different estimates of the radius of the observable universe. And that's exactly what happened in the paper, which we will discuss in the next section. In the paper, the physicists used the latest data from the Planck satellite, which is a space observatory that measured the CMB with unprecedented precision, to calculate the radius of the observable universe. They compared their result with the previous estimate by J. Richard Gott and his team in 2003, which was based on the data from the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, which was another space observatory that measured the CMB before Planck. What they found was that the observable universe is 0.7% smaller than the previous estimate. That means that the radius of the observable universe is about 45.66 billion light years instead of 46 billion light years, as previously thought. Why is there such a difference? Well, there are two main reasons. One is that the Planck data is more accurate and reliable than the WMAP data, and it gives a more precise value of the age of the universe, which is about 13.799 billion years, instead of 13.772 billion years, as estimated by WMAP. The other reason is that the Planck data gives a lower value of the Hubble constant, which is about 67.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec, instead of 69.3 kilometers per second per megaparsec, as estimated by WMAP. As we explained before, a lower Hubble constant means a faster growth of the particle horizon and a larger observable universe. However, this effect is not enough to compensate for the effect of the older age of the universe, which means a smaller observable universe. So, the net result is that the observable universe is smaller than previously thought, by about 0.7%. What does this finding mean for our understanding of the universe and its fate? Well, it means that there are some parts of the universe that we will never be able to see, even if we wait for an infinite amount of time. These parts are beyond the particle horizon, and they are forever hidden from our view. It also means that there are some parts of the universe that we can see now, but we will not be able to see in the future because they will cross the particle horizon and disappear from our sight. This is because the universe is not only expanding, but also accelerating due to a mysterious force called dark energy, which makes the space between galaxies stretch faster and faster. This acceleration will eventually make the observable universe shrink and we will see less and less of the cosmos as time goes by. On the other hand, it also means that there are some parts of the universe that we cannot see now, but we will be able to see in the future, because they will enter the particle horizon and become visible to us. This is because the light from these regions has not reached us yet, but it will in the future, as the particle horizon grows. So, the observable universe is not static, but dynamic and it changes over time, depending on the age and the expansion of the universe. The observable universe is a fascinating topic that reveals the limits of our knowledge and the wonders of nature. I hope this video has sparked your curiosity and interest in learning more about the universe and its mysteries. Thank you for watching.